And I think also what you see now, many tour operators are asking us for the first time uh, a lot about, hey, what else do you have offer? Do you have bikes? Do you have uh, hiking opportunities? So I think even clients are asking tour operators, like, what else can we do? You know, we have already seen maybe wildlife in Kenya. We've been to Tanzania. We've been to uh, Namibia. You know, what else do you have in Uganda? What makes you unique? You know, so when we talk again about our wildlife, they'll be like, but I've seen wildlife already. What else is unique for Uganda? And I think that's where adventure tourism and culture really comes in. Uh, and I really see when we started Karatunga, people, uh, of course, came for a new destination. Nobody had been to uh, Karamoja before. And they're all seeking for what can I do? Uh, is there a hiking? Is there a biking? Uh, how much does it cost? Are there guides? Is it safe? All these questions, no, nobody could answer them uh, uh, if you look at 2015 and something. Uh, so when Karatunga started, we actually are trying to bridge this gap by answering questions from tour operators, uh, helping uh, clients to also have this unique experience in Uganda. Uh, because as many people know, Karamoja is the only place still with a really rich living and a diverse culture. And also a place where you move around with your vehicle or you're cycling or walking, it's hard to find many Mabati roofs. You know, I think in many other places, you know, uh, our, you know, our population is growing really, really fast. You know, but in Karamoja, we still have a small population. In, uh, we are 1.4 million people in uh, uh, an area the size of Belgium, you know, so it's still a uh, vast uh, wilderness and people are now seeking more for these unique experiences uh, when they go for a holiday. Uh, and Karamoja can just answer many of these questions uh, for people to have a, yeah, a unique experience. Um, so I'm a keen cyclist and I came to Uganda in 2012. I brought my bicycle and I checked out some trails. And I quickly discovered that Uganda is the perfect country for cycling. It's unbelievable how many unexplored trails are still there, um, how friendly people are, how easy it is to, to just jump on your bicycle and then really get to know the environment. Um, so I did a couple of rides and when I came back home, I stepped into the shower because you know, uh, you get, get a bit dirty. And then I watched myself and I looked down and I saw all this red dirt coming off me. So that's why I called my company Red Dirt Uganda. Um, at the moment we're trying to promote cycling in as many uh, locations and with as many organizations uh, that we know. And one of them is Ugandan Wildlife Authority. There's some guys here from UWA and you see that nice picture on the banner that was made in Queen Elizabeth National Park. I'm still here, I haven't been eaten by the lions. Um, and that ranger took uh, very special care of me. And that's one of the collaborations uh, that we are pushing forward right now. We're talking with uh, Ugandan Wildlife Authority to see if you can really do cycling inside national parks, but also some other activities like running. And it's possible, as long as we have the rangers who have their very skilled profession to keep you safe and know exactly what to do, um, I remember that on that similar trip, I was with Jan, the one from the video you just saw. We were cycling through the park and we were uh, turning uh, around the curve and we saw this big elephant just in front of us. And he was already flapping his ears, which means that he's a bit annoyed. Now, I was very scared and I wanted to run away and hide in the bush. But then the ranger came there and he just solved the issue. He, he shooed the elephant away and everything was okay again. So I wouldn't advise going in the national park by yourself, but if Ua and the rangers are there, it's perfectly safe, and I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't feel any, uh, any worried at all. Um, adventure tourism is a very interesting thing. It uh, has great connection between tourism, uh, tourists and the community interaction. So, and it's something that's so special that comes out of you, out of your mind. It should be adventure in the mind and adventure in the heart because of what you encounter in the field. It's not as easy, but it's so rewarding at some point. Health-wise, you stay fit at all times. I think on a level um, of Uganda, I think many, many adventure activities have been offered um, 
in the past years, but maybe they haven't been labeled as that, or we haven't grouped them together under this label of adventure tourism. I mean, we've had rafting, we had cycling tours maybe on a lower scale, we had nature walks, of course, but we never really used it um, for our marketing in the way we are using it now, also under the new brand. So, of course, we hope with this new development in Uganda, um, yeah, we will make adventure tourism bigger here um, and develop products which are, which are feeding into this. And then lastly, not to take too much time from the perspective of Matoko Tours, um, having seen all those trends and developments emerge, like as a tour operator, of course we, are, um, yeah, we have to see how we can implement this and incorporate it in whatever we do. Um, so our number one priority now has been to actually not develop new products, but see which products have been already developed. Because often it happens on a regional level, on a local level. Our, some of our great partners here in the Adventure Tourism Cluster have a lot of expertise and have developed great products. So now it's about how do we incorporate them in our itineraries.